joined today on Simplifying Airports here by Damien Takalitz from Melbourne Airport. Damien, welcome to Simplifying and tell us a little about yourself and what exactly you do at Melbourne Airports. Thank you, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Look, um, uh, for those of you who have not met me, I'm uh, the Executive General Manager of Corporate Development at Melbourne Airport. Um, in that capacity I lead a team responsible for route development, um, corporate and media affairs and also um, the promotion of our business of mergers and acquisitions. So what goes on behind the scenes in route development? I mean, you've, you've backed some big Air Asia X, Emirates, Thrice Daily, and now Air India, flying non-stop from Delhi. Correct. I mean, what we try and do is to leverage the competitive advantage that Melbourne Airport has as an airport and the city has as a destination, and they're, they're quite varied. So from an airport point of view, we have the lowest charges of our competitors. In all of Australia? Uh, of our competitors. Okay. I mean, the smaller airports we don't compete with, but for example, um, we're, we're 52% cheaper than Brisbane and we're 62% cheaper than uh, Queensland, so that's a, that's a big cost. Wow. Over Sydney, which is our main competitor, we have the advantage that all of our terminals are under an integrated roof, so that there's great connectivity. Right. We're also a 24 hour 7 curfew free airport, which means great scheduling options and um, uh, no restriction on our freight operations, which is great for the unit for us as well. Right. Now, does it make a difference that a lot of traffic is terminating in Melbourne as opposed to hubs like Dubai or Singapore where it's transit passengers? Well, we are trying to build our hub from the point of view of the domestic connections and uh, a number of our traffic uh, goes through onto New Zealand, for example. Um, but we are a major gateway. We source traffic from Adelaide and some of the other states and we're trying to do that more in the future. We have recently acquired um, the services of um, Qatar, uh, Emirates have gone to Triple Daily, um, they've got a tag service to uh, New Zealand, Air India have announced recently services to Melbourne, uh, they're hoping to also pick up some passengers in New Zealand. So really it's a great new story in terms of developing our hub in the southeast Australian region. Right, that's that's fantastic work and I mean just mm. the results speaks, speak volume. Now when you're attracting these airlines, do you work closely with the Victoria tourism bodies or the government? How do, how do the dynamics work? The Victorian um, economy is very much a resilient economy built around business, built around education, built around tourism, and built around visiting friends and relatives. And that gives us great advantages because we're not reliant on just one single source of income. However, um, tourism does play an important part and the Victorian government works very closely with us to try and promote inbound tourism. And that's one of the great things about Melbourne because we have quite a number of different and unique tourist attractions. We have um, a number of major events over the course of the year ranging from the Grand Prix, the Australian Open Tennis, Golf, Spring Racing Carnival, you name it. Melbourne it's all a sporty city basically. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, actually, it's not just a sporting city, it's actually as well an arts capital. It's the fashion capital of the world. Wow. Uh, well, certainly of of Asia Pacific, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, when it comes to bottom line, mm. how important is it for you to first turn a profit? Are you private? Or we are, you? are private, yes. We're owned by a number of Australian institutions. Okay. So, so I'm guessing revenue is and profits are a key factor. Look, ultimately our shareholders have to get a, a fair return on their money. Right. Um, we can't um, get them to cough up money and to invest in our infrastructure if they're not making a good return. Right. If we're not investing in our infrastructure, we're not going to be able to supply the airlines, the services and the capacity that they ultimately need to grow their business. So we need to find a win-win. Right, right. And one of the key differentiating factors I feel you have is your website. You've put in a lot of effort into that. We have put a lot of effort into our website. That's part of our Fly Melbourne campaign. What we're trying to do is connect up uh, direct traffic into Melbourne rather than flying to that low cost service airport in, in the north, um, <laughs> which, sorry, cut that. Yes. You're gonna have to cut that. I'll cut it. Go back, go back. All right, I'll, I'll ask the question again. Okay. You're going to have to One edit that of, out. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, edit that. Don't say that. I'll, I'll put it in bloopers. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> All right. So, one of the key things I really like about Melbourne Airport is the website. Tell us a little about how that fits in with the whole yeah. overall strategy. Well, the website is an integral part of our Fly Direct Melbourne campaign. What we're trying to do is promote um, airlines to fly directly to Melbourne. 
That's important for our Melbourne customers. Um, they don't want to be flying in the middle of the night, coming home and stopping off at an intermediate point like Sydney or Brisbane. Mm -hmm. um, there's inconvenience, uh, and you know that's a really important factor. So the website helps us promote that. The Fly Melbourne campaign helps Australians understand the direct uh, flights that are available from Melbourne, and therefore we like to uh, uh, promote those. Right. So if I'm say if I'm flying from Gold Coast to let's say name it as in Dubai, Dubai. Okay? Yep. and I can actually go to your website and can see Brisbane to Gold Coast, oh, sorry, Gold Coast to Melbourne on Virgin Blue mm. and then Melbourne to Dubai on Emirates. Yeah. If you want, for example, go on a, a cheap flight, um, you might consider going uh, via uh, AeroAsia X. Now right. AeroAsia X does fly out of the Gold Coast, but if you're in Sydney, for example, you might want to find that you come to Melbourne on a domestic flight. Right. We have great connectivity and you hop onto an AeroAsia X flight to KL, or right. indeed um, uh, through to Mumbai. So. And are there a lot of people doing this? There are lots of people doing that. Self-hubbing? More, more and more, more and more people. And it's right. probably the way of the future, particularly with the low-cost services. Right. Now, one of the dilemmas we see as airports trying to cater to full service carriers as well as low cost carriers. Are these needs different and is that a tension point? They are different and I think it's something to be fair that we're all grappling with. The low cost model is one that has to be complemented by the airport in terms of the infrastructure and the service levels. Um, but on the other hand, I think we are also seeing that there are some basics. Customers want to get through an airport as quickly as possible. Customers want to see facilities that are working, um, amenities that are provided, good shopping. So I think there is a lot of middle ground which whether or not you're a low cost carrier, whether or not you're a premium full service carrier, your passengers want those services and we aim to provide that. Right, and are you looking to build some sort of a Kuala Lumpur style low cost terminal with no gates and bare bone services? Sort of? uh, watch this space. <laughs> sure, sounds interesting. Finally, um, aeronautical revenue versus non-aeronautical revenue. Another emerging field in terms of airports. Where where does Melbourne Airport stand in that? Well, I, it's interesting you say um, it's emerging because we have quite a long history during our privatisation of um, drawing revenue from um, non-aeronautical sources. So um, a large part of our revenue is aeronautical, but we supplement that with retailing. We supplement that with our land bank for property development mm -hmm. um, and some of the park car parking products we have. So they're and an important. What, revenue. What's the split like? Broadly, it's 40% um, aeronautical with the balanced commercial. 60% non-aeronautical, mm. and mostly through retail, through renting out your land and making better and use. And property development. Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. What are some of the key opportunities you see going forward for Melbourne this year? I think Melbourne is. Um, you know, the best way to put it is that Melbourne is an underserved market. We currently have 600,000 people who travel uh, internationally via Sydney or Brisbane, and they're our customers, and we aim to secure those through direct services. So the big challenge for us is to pick that easy, pick, easy, uh, easy hanging fruit. In addition, um, once we secure our hub status, um, we will have more and more carriers based in Melbourne. Uh, which will also drive up and stimulate demand. Right, and how do you re what determines you have reached that goal? That hub, what's the critical point? The sky is the limit. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. We wish you all the best, all and right. thanks for joining us, Jamie. Thank you.